Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to the program. Today, we are going to work on Ladybird, uh, and it's going to be about performance because yesterday I was loading up these CSS specifications in Ladybird. And um, first thing I noticed is that we do a pretty good job of rendering CSS specs these days. I mean, there are some uh, little issues, <laughs> but uh, on the whole, they look really good. Um, but the thing I didn't like was that the table of contents here on the left is super laggy um, when I'm hovering different items. And we can see the content is kind of shifting up and down vertically below the thing I'm hovering. So there's some kind of layout going on. Otherwise, things wouldn't shift around on the page. And um, this is my motivation today for implementing um, an optimization I've been meaning to do for a long time, um, but I never had a, a like a pressing reason to do so. And it's basically, actually, let me let me get a profile of this so that um, it's easier to illustrate what I'm talking about. But basically, I want to reduce the amount of work that we do um, for these kind of uninteresting. Uh, layout updates uh, because it's if you just look at it you can intuitively tell that it's not a very exciting layout change right like something some items move down or up like one pixel um, but of course the engine doesn't know that so it just does a complete wipe of the existing layout tree builds a new one does a layout um, and then it just happens that the result is nearly identical to the old one. Um, so let me actually capture a profile. If I can get this fella to resize, is everything okay? Okay, here we go. So let me capture some uh, samples here. I'm just going to hover and then wait for it to repaint. It's taking quite a bit of time. Um, very long time, actually. Come on now. There we go. But yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on here. Um, so once it updates, I'm going to stop and then we will look at the profile. So here at the top, we can see that um, update layout is just at the top of what's going on here. And we have this really nice um, call graph view here in call grind, or um, kcash grind, uh, where we can drill down and we see update layout calls layout tree builder, um, which creates the layout tree. And then create layout tree has its time distributed between creating layout nodes for elements and also creating pseudo elements if needed. So um, here we can see that basically all of the time that we spend on layout here goes into building a layout tree. Um, and uh, the actual act of like laying out the page is not even showing up because it's so tiny. Um, if we look for layout viewport, we can see that the actual layout work is like 0.3% of runtime, um, which is pretty wild uh, because it's a big, long specification, right? Like you would think that laying out all of this text here uh, would take a moment and it does take a moment it's just that uh, it's just totally overwhelming how much other stuff we do um, so the optimization that I want to do today is um, not rebuild the layout tree if we don't need to and um, today what we do is whenever we say oh you got to relay out the page um, because some layout affecting property was changed. So here we got um, the border bottom property changing on these fellas. 
and I think they set like a negative margin to make up for the border bottom, but it doesn't, the math doesn't quite work out, so it looks a little janky. Uh, but they're essentially setting properties that um, affect layout, but uh, they're not changing the um, display property of anything. And the display property is really what would cause um, us to have to do a different layout tree. Um, because the, the layout tree is, if you're not familiar, it's essentially, um, we take the DOM tree, and then we, for every element in the DOM tree, we run all of the CSS that we have for the page, and we run them against every element, figure out which rules match, and then we take the rules that match and the element, and then we use that to create uh, a layout node. And then we put these layout nodes in hierarchy, sort of similar to the DOM, but with some exceptions, um, and that becomes the layout tree. And then that is the, um, the thing that layout operates on. Um, and the, the main thing that governs what kind of node we create for the layout tree um, is the CSS display property. So my intuition here is that it shouldn't be necessary to, to rebuild the layout tree unless the, dis the computed display property changes. Um, so that's the optimization that I want to build today. And I'm hoping that uh, by implementing that, we should be able to get rid of the bulk of this work right here. Because yeah, so like 34% of, of this profile, um, but all of the time in update layout, essentially. And then um, we also have a hefty, hefty chunk of time spent in painting, which is um, totally separate past that comes after layout. Um, but today we're going to go after the the layout tree building, the redundant layout tree building, and avoid doing that. Um, just actually, let me just show you, just to be crystal clear about um, what's happening on that page. Because I mentioned that they're setting here in, in Firefox, it doesn't actually shift around like that. Although if I change the zoom level to 90%, it starts to jiggle when you move around. Uh, likewise, at other zoom levels, it jiggles a little bit. So there's something that isn't quite adding up in the um, CSS here. Um, and if I, let's see, if I change the hover state here, bloop, then we can see what they do to the thing when it's hovered. So when hovered, this fellow gets a border bottom width of 3px and a margin bottom of minus 2px. And I don't know how that's supposed to, to add up to nothing, <laughs> but that's the thing that it does. Maybe they're expecting the margin to collapse with something. I don't know. Doesn't seem to work completely as intended. <laughs> but the uh, margin and the, the border width properties, neither of them affect the type of uh, nodes that we get in the layout tree. So we shouldn't need to rebuild it. Um, and when I say we shouldn't need to rebuild the layout tree, that just means if we have a layout tree uh, from before, we can keep that and then run the layout algorithms over the same tree again. And we'll still uh, get a fresh layout. It's just that um, we can keep the same tree. So there's no need to go through all the elements and run CSS against them. There's no need to make pseudo elements and stuff like that. Um, in, in some situations. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So let's see. The mechanism that's um, in play here, by the way, is, of course, I'm hovering different elements. And what we do when you hover um, something is, essentially, you're going from hovering element A to hovering element B. Um, so there's, there's usually an previous hover node and a new hover node. And um, whenever you switch the currently hovered part of the page or the currently hovered node, we uh, have to calculate new style for both the old and the new hover node. Uh, and any ancestors that they may have up to the nearest common shared ancestors between the two hover nodes, at that point, we can stop in, um, invalidating style. Um, but the mechanism that we 
uh, use to achieve this is called a style updates so or, or style invalidation. So when you do a set hovered element, hovered node, um, let's see. So it finds a common ancestor between the old and the new hovered node, as I was saying. And um, if we find a common ancestor, they in, then we invalidate style at the common ancestor and all of its sub uh, tree. Otherwise, we just invalidate style for the entire document if, if they didn't have a common ancestor for whatever reason. I think the reason that would happen is if you don't have a um, hover node at all, that means maybe it's the very first time you're hovering anything on the page. Anyway, so when we invalidate the style, that means that uh, eventually, somebody will come and recompute the style, but that happens lazily the next time it's necessary. And um, the function that ends up getting called for every element is recompute style. So if an element has been marked as having invalid style, this thing will eventually get called uh, at some point in the future, um, either on a timer or synchronously because some other functionality requires up-to-date style. Uh, we will be here, and then what we'll do is we ask the style computer, which is this big machine that runs CSS, essentially. We ask it to compute style for this element, and then um, we want to figure out the required invalidation. And the required invalidation is essentially, um, if I change style from what I had before to what I'm getting now after rerunning CSS against this element, um, what in what ways do I need to uh, refresh the page? Like, do I need to uh, repaint something because my background color changed? Or do I need to relay out because my width changed? Or do I need to restack stuff because my Z index changed? Um, that's the job of compute required invalidation is to figure out what kind of invalidation do I need to perform um, based on these being my old values and these being my new values. So here, um, yeah, right, it returns a required invalidation. So today we can say this um, CSS change requires no invalidation. That's great. Or repaint only means that we have to, some color changed or something, we have to repaint, maybe text decoration changed. Uh, but we don't need to relay out, just repaint. Rebuild stack and context tree. Um, Maybe you changed your opacity or you changed a Z index, something that affects the um, Z axis stacking stuff. Uh, and then finally, relay out is kind of the worst case today. Um, if some, some style change happens, uh, like the width of something changes or, um, or the display changes from none to block or anything that, that means we have to rerun layout, then this is our sort of worst case scenario. But what I want to do is I want to add an even worser case, uh, which is going to be a rebuild layout tree. Uh, and then we will let relayout be um, that you can keep the layout tree if you have one and run layout over it again, but you don't need to make a new tree. You don't need to run CSS and make a new tree uh, for everything. So the goal now is to, I guess, uh, communicate this to the, um, well, first we have to calculate the correct invalidation, and then we want to communicate that to the um, layout mechanism and, and document so that it can, um, it, can, it can avoid rebuilding the layout tree if we tell it to. OK. OK, I think that that's a description of what I want to do. Now let's try to do it. <laughs> so um, OK, so the first thing, I guess we should just trace into this function here and see what we're looking at. So first thing it does actually is say, if the old style has a computed font that is different from my new style computed font, so the font has changed. That means that in the, in the old world, uh, we would just say, oh, well, we got a relay out then. Um, but I think we can't short circuit like this anymore because relayout is no longer the worst possible case. It's just a case. There is actually something that's even worse. Um, so we can't 
exit like this here. Instead, we have to um, just remember that we, at the very least, require uh, a relay out. And now that I say that, this makes me think maybe we should do this as a struct instead. Required invalidation after style change. Something like this. Um, and then we can like enumerate the various invalidations that we might, might want to do here. Um, yeah, those are basically exactly the ones. Thank you, Copilot. Um, OK. So here, let's see, required invalidation after style change. We'll return one of those things. <laughs> Uh, and then invalidation. And if this font has changed, we say invalidation. Well, we're going to have to relay out um, at that point. Yeah. And relay out implies uh, repaint because you, ha um, you have to repaint after a relay out. That will happen automatically. And I think maybe it also implies rebuild stacking context tree. I think I'm not completely sure. I think it does. But uh, let's try to keep these things separated. So here we had these booleans that are essentially the booleans in my struct now. So I can just keep those separately. Um, so OK, so what does this function do? Compute required invalidation. It will essentially takes the old style and the new style for an element, and then we iterate over all of the CSS properties one by one and just comparing them. Like, it, did this property change between the two styles? So like, we compare everything, like color, background color, background image, um, column gap, width, border, right, width, uh, everything. We compare <laughs> every CSS property. And this case here, actually, I find a little suspicious. So if if you um, if both values are null, then fine, whatever, continue. But like, if one value is null and the other one is not null, I'm suspicious. I suspect that this case doesn't even happen in practice. So um, yeah, that's essentially what I wanted to say. One of the values for mm -hmm, just want to say that and then just name the property if this should happen. Uh, because I think that's a bit of a weird case. And that's kind of what I want to do. But um, maybe I want that to be a helper. Like full. Yeah, like that. That would be very cool. OK. Uh, and then so here in the loop, we're checking, are the values identical? Then fine. Then we just continue, because this is not interesting. But if we're here, it means the value has changed. So if the property ID is display, that means that we are changing the display property of an element. So we must rebuild the layout tree. and. Uh, at that point, I think we can continue. Or what am I thinking? At that point, that's that's the worst case. So maybe at that point we should just say, "Oh, you gotta you gotta redo everything." Um, note: if the display computed CSS display property changes, we have to rebuild the entire layout tree. In the future, we should figure out ways to um, rebuild only the um, only the uh, only part of the tree. Um, but smaller part of the tree, yeah, yeah, because it it still shouldn't be necessary to rebuild the entire tree. Uh, but it's just uh, for now, let's just do that. 
because it's easier <laughs> to to implement and um, then we want to get smarter we can learn how to uh, for example if you're like changing the d display of something that has no children and it just needs to like pop in and out um, maybe it will be enough to rebuild um, this element and its parent in the layout tree or something like that like you, you can you can figure out ways to do a very partial invalidation or partial rebuild but at the moment, let's just worry about not doing um, rebuilds at all unless you're touching display. Okay. So this is special handling for visibility. So if you're changing visibility from collapse to not collapse or vice versa, then we want to, at the very least, do a relayout. So we'll say invalidation, relayout true. Um, and then I think we can just... Do something like that. Okay, that's pretty tidy. And then here we don't need to return like that. <clears throat> if the property, okay, so let me see. So essentially what we're looking at here, <clears throat> we're calling out to, to this generated code. Um, if the property affects layout, then we will say that needs a relayout. And if it property affects stacking context, um, then we need to rebuild the stacking context. And otherwise, in this case, this just means that we fell, we got all the way here. That just means that some property has changed from something to something else. We got to at least repaint. Um, <clears throat> there are cases where we wouldn't even need to repaint, but at the moment we always, at the very least when something changes, we do a repaint. Um, and let me show you where we get these from actually, property effects layout and property effects stacking context. So we have this file called properties.json where we annotate all of the different CSS properties with some metadata for the engine. So if you change like the border left width, for example, um, then I'm, I was just gonna say, I'm surprised to see that it doesn't say effects layout, but, um, but I remember that effects layout is default true. Uh, but if you look here at border radius, we can see that border radius has effects layout false because changing the border radius of something doesn't um, change the page layout. It doesn't cause anything to shift around. It just um, paints differently. So if you change this property, we'll just repaint, it'll be fine. Same thing here, border right color, no layout affecting. Uh, if we look at Z index, we'll see that it doesn't affect layout, but it does affect stacking context. Uh, so from this information in properties JSON, that's where we have these two helpers that we can ask like, hey, does this property affect layout or stacking context? Okay. So now that we have done this, and I'm sure that I have some code here that I need to fix up, right? Recompute style. Also, I had that enum. Let me get rid of that enum. Required invalidation. Because I think what I really want to do here is I want to. Um, what I really want to do is I want to um, make this public API for element. So let's see. Element um, recompute style. Yeah, so recompute style today just returns needs relay out no or yes. That's the only thing it can tell you. So we're going to change this. Uh, and we're going to return a required invalidation after style change. And we will even make it no discard so that you don't have a stupid little accident. Okay. Um, and I guess we'll do that, and that, and that. Okay. And then how do we return one of these things? So required invalidation after style change. We'll make one. And so what's going on here? So this is like if you if we are in recompute style and we have style from before. Does this branch right here? Then we will say, oh, invalidation is whatever compute required invalidation returns. Um, otherwise, I guess 
we can do a full invalidation if we didn't have style before, because then how else? Then we don't know. So if we don't know, full. If we had style, we can figure out a narrower invalidation. Do that. Okay. Cool. And then um, I guess if no invalidation is required whatsoever, then we don't even need to like copy in the new style or, or do anything. Like if nothing important changed, when would that ever happen though? Um, well, oh wait, I guess if nothing changed, right? Yeah, yeah, you looped over all the properties and they were all identical. Then it's a none. So let me actually make a helper for that just to uh, just make this a little bit nicer. Um, okay. And then I can say if invalidation is none. I can just return the invalidation. Otherwise, so we store the newly computed values. And then what's going on here? So if we have to repaint, then we will um, see if we have a layout node corresponding uh, to this element, then we will sort of apply the new style to that layout node. Uh, instead of rebuilding a new layout node, we will just take the existing layout node and say, hey, here's new CSS style. Um, sort of adjust yourself to the new style. Um, and actually, all both of these branches are checking if layout node. So maybe we can write this list like this instead. If layout node, then we want to apply the style. Well, we don't want to apply the style if um, invalidation rebuild layout tree. Like if we're going to build a new layout tree, we don't need to update the old layout node because that's going to get thrown away anyway. Uh, otherwise, we do want to apply the style because the layout tree is going to stick around. So let's see. Uh, if we're keeping the layout tree, uh, we can just apply the new style to the existing layout tree. Exactly. Thank you, Copilot. Um, for relayout, we need to... Actually, I'm thinking maybe for everything else, we can just uh, 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 uh. I'm thinking for everything else, we can have the caller deal with it. So like, if we're gonna rebuild layout tree, if we're gonna re so maybe this should be the condition. If we're not gonna rebuild the layout tree, and we do have a layout node, then we want to update that node a little bit. So we'll apply the new style. And uh, if we need to paint it, then we will tell it that it needs to be displayed. Yes, that's good. And then uh, for rebuilding the stacking context tree, I think we'll, we're going to make the caller deal with that. Because the way that it's written now, it's actually kind of weird because it's um, invalidating the stacking context tree is kind of a document level thing. As you can see here, we're just calling a function on document. So if you have 100 elements uh, and you do a style update and all of them change the Z index, you will invalidate the stacking context tree 100 times, even though it's the same exact operation uh, every one of those times. So I think we'll make the caller deal with that. And in fact, we can just do this, I think. Invalidation. Yeah. I feel optimistic about this. Uh, okay, so let's see. Document. So now we're going to have errors here. Yeah, because it's no longer returning um, needs relay out, yes or no. So what we want to do here, this is a function that is called to recursively iterate through the entire document update style calls update style recursively and 
until now it's just returned a bool that says whether or not we need to invalidate like rebuild the layout tree essentially but i think now we're going to make this thing return an element required invalidation after style change and then we can do something like Um, if invalidation, so if we need to rebuild the layout tree, then this is that scenario. Invalidate the layout, throw it all out, and uh, rebuild it. Maybe we should rename this function to that, but um, at the moment it's called invalidate layout. Otherwise, if we just need to relay out, actually, this is going to be going to have a couple of things in here, I guess. So otherwise, if invalidation relay out, then we need to um, update the layout. So we'll call set needs layout. This doesn't throw away the layout tree. It just schedules uh, a lazy um, rerunning of the layout algorithms. Uh, if we need to repaint, so I guess that's an else if, because if you relay out, you will always, we always repaint after we lay out anyway. Um, and I, actually, I don't need to deal with repaint, right? Because we already did that here. It's a little bit awkward, but we've already, we've already handled repaint and validation at the element level. So here we're only concerned about like high level document level stuff. So we need to relay out um, and if invalidation rebuild stacking context tree, um, then we got to invalidate the stacking context tree. Right. Okay. Okay, so update style recursively. How did we make this thing work? So the way we did it before was that we just ORed the result of update style recursively. And I kind of want to keep doing that, but I can't I can't just OR one of these things. Um invalidation. What if I could though? What if we just let ourselves do that? Wouldn't that be cool? Um, what if this thing had, uh, what if it had an operator or, or assignment? Yeah. That's exactly what I want to do. So let's see. I'm feeling kind of good about this. Um, bam, 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 bam. Yeah, it's going to take a moment to compile. But this feels sane. Um, probably there's some aspect of something that I'm not thinking of right now. I'm thinking, is there some other property that affects the type of uh, layout tree node that we need to create? But I'm not sure that any of the CSS properties are involved. Like for form elements, we do different things um, for like input type checkbox versus input type button versus type text and so on. But those are not CSS properties. Those are just... Um, DOM content attributes on the element. And we handle all that stuff separately anyway. For strictly for CSS stuff, the display property is what's important. And because we're dealing with a computed display property, uh, I think we will have done any box transformations like blockification and lineification uh, before we see the computed value. Box type chain. Yeah, so if we do like a box type transform, for example, because you uh, make something position absolute or um, you make something float left, float right, 
Uh, then we have to turn it into a block. And uh, there are some, some different rules here for when things are blockified or inlineified, but uh, I'm pretty sure that happens, yeah, in compute style. So the, the display value that we get back will have all that taken into account. So we don't need to think about blockification because by the time we're an element um, doing the compute required invalidation, it will have already been transformed into a different type of box. That's, that's probably something I'm missing, but this feels like a fundamentally sound uh, optimization to me, and it's uh, kind of similar to uh, what you might find in other engines. Of course, the existing production engines are a lot more sophisticated and do more fine-grained invalidation, but this um, this is kind of a, a step forwards towards better and more fine-grained validation. Just like um, don't rebuild the layout tree if it wouldn't change anyway. Uh, and then we just need to do a hundred more things like that. Okay, so let's see if this actually makes it faster. At least it works. Um, I would say it feels vaguely faster. Am I just imagining it? Let me compare against the old one. Oh, no, it's definitely faster. <laughs> <laughs> Still had the old one running here. Okay, so this is real sluggish compared to the new one. It's not perfect, but it's at least it's following the cursor way better than we did before. Okay, old, new. That's really good. And everything else looks fine. So that's good. Um, just thinking, let's get a new profile and see what it looks like, because that's always interesting. Dun, dun, dun. So previously we had like 35% update layout. So I'm expecting to see um, like no update layout now when I do that. And instead, Um, I guess painting would be the thing that should start to, to dominate, become the next issue that we have to do something about. Come on now. All right. Let's hover some things, capture some samples. Um, but I feel good about this. And it's kind of funny because this is the type of stuff that I was working on sometimes on WebKit, like almost 10 years ago. And it's really, feels really nice to like have this type of stuff in my life again. <laughs> I missed it. I don't wanna, I don't wanna work in big tech, but I do like to work on these types of problems. So I guess I had to sort of recreate create an environment where I can work on these things without um, <laughs> without working on big tech projects. And here we are. Okay, so I think that's a just update so I can stop profiling. Here we go. Okay, um, was that, that was not the right one. Is that the one? Okay. Seven, six, something or other. All right, what are you doing? Hey, look at that paint at the top. And update style is in there. Who's calling it? I don't know, but where's update layout? Update layout is no longer a big problem. <laughs> Update layout is less than 1%. So that is quite astonishing, to be honest. The, um, because what we're looking at is like, this specification is a, 
a large page. There's a lot of stuff going on. For that to be less than 1%, that must mean that the thing that we're doing instead is, oh my goodness, Oopsan? I was running with Oopsan this whole time? <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Uh, okay, I, I should uh, test without Oopsan. Um, let's see. Undefined. Let me turn that off. Okay, so <laughs> we'd probably be probably be a bit faster um, if we didn't build with Oopsan to begin with. Uh, Oopsan is the undefined behavior sanitizer. Uh, it's a great feature, and um, I think I had that on because I was debugging something else this morning, but I shouldn't have left that on, but I did. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna look at um, we're gonna look at the performance before my changes with Oobsan off, just to see if <laughs> if performance was like maybe it wasn't so bad. Um, We'll see. I, I, I think it's still going to be uh, noticeable. Maybe it would be nice to print out when we're doing a um, relay out without. Here, we can say like relay out without rebuild. Because it would be fun to know that, that we did that. Uh, maybe I should terminate that line correctly. Yeah. Ooh, getting excited messages from somebody. That's always nice. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm 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 highly optimistic about this, and I I really felt like it was a bit too slow. Um like after doing the optimization. So if that is down to Oopsan, that would be great. Um, if, if we run now without Oopsan and it's just super snappy, I'm gonna be very happy. Um, I'm pretty sure I tested it yesterday without Oopsan, but <laughs> now I'm starting to have doubts. Um, come on, just finish. Hmm. It's tempting to tempting to start looking at uh, partial rebuilds as well, but let's let's do one thing at a time. Okay, so W three. Let's open this up. So this is optimized without Oopsan, and that is indeed very snappy. Now it's really following the mouse cursor. That's awesome. And if I were to git stash here. Hopefully I don't have to rebuild super much. I have basically everything in Zcash, I think, save for a handful of files. Great. Okay, so this is unoptimized without Oopsan, and it is laggy. Uh, not as laggy as it was with, but uh, it is laggy. And I was testing this on my laptop, which is less powerful than this desktop computer, and it was more laggy than uh, this computer with Oopsan. So I think uh, for for less powerful computers, this kind of optimization can be like a real deal breaker or a real night and day situation. Uh, that's, that's excellent. So I guess we will do a commit here, I was going to say. Okay. Yeah, libweb. Uh, try to avoid uh, avoid rebuilding layout tree unless CSS display property changes. Uh, before this change, um, any uh, style change that um, mutated a property 
we consider uh, layout affecting um, would trigger a complete tear down and rebuild of the layout tree. Um, this wasn't actually necessary. This isn't actually for the vast majority of CSS properties. Um, so this patch makes the invalidation a bit finer. And we now only rebuild the layout tree when CSS display, when the CSS display property. For other uh, layout affecting properties, we keep the old layout tree if we have one and, uh, and run the layout algorithms over that once again. Um, this is significantly faster since uh, we don't have to run all the CSS selectors um, all over again. Excellent. OK. I like it. I think that's pretty good. And yeah, that's really good. It's entirely possible that that I messed something up here or that there was some situation that I didn't think of. But I think the architecture in general, it's simple and it's easy to, to extend with um, more types of validation. More fine-grained stuff can be tacked on. And we can evolve this into uh, more sophisticated optimizations as we go. But this, is, uh, this feels like a really good first step. So um, and previously, I've been doing, I think I did a couple of videos about um, making hover faster on various pages um, by turning these uh, hovers into repaint only. And oh, we have some type error on this page. Hello. Let's try to load it again. There we go. <laughs> um, yeah, so here, these are repaint only invalidations. But um, whenever you would change any layout affecting property, we would just give up and say, ah, fine, I'll, I'll rebuild the layout tree. And now we don't do that anymore. We, uh, we only do it for display. That's really cool. Um, and I mean, in practice, we also end up doing it for some mutations to position, to float, um, and whatever else affects blockification and lineification. But yeah, this is a step in the right direction, I think. Hmm. I can't. I, I'm sure that there are many pages that do this. I just can't think of one off the top of my head. Um, but keep in mind, this isn't just for hover. This is also for things like any JavaScript that like changes style. Anybody who does like element dot style dot whatever equal foo. Um, if they change layout affecting properties now we will not nuke the layout tree. So I think this will be this will be felt in, in a lot of content. I just can't think of examples. <laughs> um, all right, so that's really good. And you know what? I'm going to get a new profile now that um, now that we have Oops, hand turned off because then I can maybe get like a slightly more accurate profile. Hmm. Okay. Sometimes I wonder if I should um, have like some big um, console message or something for myself saying, hey, you have built with oops, hand, Andreas. Just be aware of that if you start profiling. Could be nice. <laughs> All right. One thing that's kind of interesting with um, 
Ladybird and Serenity OS in general is that we don't build with a lot of optimizations typically. Like I have never really tried our software with all optimizations turned on. Like I don't know how it would affect it. Um, it could be that we're uh, we're able to get substantially faster from more optimizations. Um, but I, I like having that as like something that we can turn on in, in the future um, and just get stuff for free. That would be cool if it actually pans out that way. All right, so who's topping up now? We got paint at the top, sure. Uh, painting text, sure. Um, style, recompute style. Okay, so recompute style is still Right, so recompute style, we still have to do that work. We just don't need to do the um, layout tree rebuild. That's fine. We got open type uh, lookups. Could probably cache much of that. Um, emoji detection. UTF-8 decode. Uh, I think um, doing something about text drawing would probably be the next area to focus here. Like now that's top in the chart, but uh, not today, because today I'm happy with this. We've made great progress. We made, made the thing stop lagging. That's, uh, <laughs> that's all that I wanted to achieve. Look at it go. Mm, it's delightful. All right, <laughs> so this will be the end of the video. If you made it this far, then I thank you for watching, for hanging out. I uh, hope that you saw something interesting today, and uh, I certainly enjoyed this. I've been doing a lot of uh, work on just improving functionality, fidelity lately. It was nice to do a little bit of optimization. Um, so it's good. Anyways, thanks for hanging out. I'll see you all next time. Bye.